So let's talk about The Bride of Frankenstein. Big D's Entertainment Breakings and Reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Duel, better known to as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a review of the 1935 sci-fi horror flick The Bride of Frankenstein, released by Universal, directed by James Whale, who previously directed the first film, and, what, and also he directed The Invisible Man. Anyway, the film brings back Boris Karloff as the Frankenstein monster, plus Colin Clive as Henry Frankenstein. Also in the cast is Elsa Lanchester in the dual role of Mary Shelley and the title character, plus Ernest Stessing Stessinger as Dr. Septimus Pretorius. Now, if you have not seen my review of the first Frankenstein, I advise you to click on the card Come in about right about now. There we go. So that way you can catch what you might have missed or see it again before you go into this. Because this is the first sequel to the actual Frankenstein. <clears throat> okay. Now then, let's get into our story. It takes place immediately after the events of the first film. It is a root in a subplot of the original story. Its plot follows a chastened Henry Frankenstein as he attempts to abandon his plans to create life, only to be tempted and finally coerced by his old mentor, Dr. Pretorius, among with threats from the monster into constructing a mate for it. Here's our story. On a stormy night, Percy bought by Shelley, or how you pronounce that male name, and Lord Byron praised Mary Shelley for her story of Frankenstein and his monster. She reminds them that her intention for writing the novel was to impart a moral lesson, the consequences of a moral man who tries to play God. Mary says she has more of the story to tell. The scene shifts to the end of the first film in, 18, in the year of 1899. Of course... 1931 Frankenstein is what I mean, in the 18, and then we go to 1899, you know what I mean. Villagers scattered around the burning windmill cheer the apparent death of the monster. Hans, the father of the girl, girl Lucy, the creature drowned in the previous film. No, not Lucy, Maria. I'm, I'm losing, I'm just lost, um, I apologize. Please don't mind me. Let the air slide, okay? <clears throat> anyway, he wants to see the monster's bones. He falls into a flood pit underneath the mill where the monster, having survived the fire, strangles him. Hauling himself from the pit, the monster casts Hans' wife to her death. He next encounters Minnie, who flees in terror. The body of Henry Frankenstein, who is thought to have died at the windmill, is returned to his fiancée Elizabeth at his ancestral castle home. Minnie arrives to sound the alarm about the monster, but her warning goes unheeded. Elizabeth, seeing Henry move, realizes he is still alive. Nursed back to health by Elizabeth, Henry has renounced his creation, but still believes he may be destined to unlock the secret of life and immortality. A hysterical Elizabeth cries that she foresees death. Sorry, I'm watching a movie, but this won't take long. Henry visits the lab of his former mentor, Dr. Septimus Pretorius, where he shows Henry several homunculi... He has created, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, Pretorius wishes to work with Henry to create a mate for the monster, with the proposed venture involving Pretorius growing an artificial brain while Henry gathers parts for the mate. The monster saves a young shepherdess from drowning. Her screams upon seeing him alert two hunters who shoot and injure the monster. The hunters raise a mob that sets out in pursuit. Captured and trussed to a pole, the monster is hauled to a dungeon and chained. Left alone, he breaks his chains, overpowers the guards, and escapes into the woods. <coughs> that night, following the sound of a violin playing Ave Maria, 
The monster encounters an old blind hermit who thanks God for sending him a friend. He teaches the monster words like friend and good and shares a meal with him. Two lost hunters stumble upon the cottage and recognize the monster. He accident well, uh, <laughs> excuse me, I got him myself. He attacks him and accidentally burns down the cottage as hunters lead the hermit away. Taking refuge from another angry mob at a crypt, the monster spies for tourists and his cronies, Carl and Ludwig, breaking open a grave. The henchmen depart as Pretorius stays to enjoy a light supper. The monster approaches Pretorius and learns that Pretorius plans to create a mate for him. Henry and Elizabeth, now married, are visited by Pretorius. When Henry expresses his refusal to assist Pretorius' plans, Pretorius calls in the monster, who demands Henry's help. Henry again refuses, and Pretorius orders the monster out, secretly signaling him to kidnap Elizabeth. Pretorius guarantees her safe return upon Henry's participation. Henry returns to his tower laboratory, where, despite himself, he grows excited over his work. After being assured of Elizabeth safely, Henry completes the bride's body. A storm rages as final preparations are made to bring the bride to life. Her bandaged red body is raised through the roof, where electricity is harnessed from lightning to animate her. Henry and Pretorius lower her, and after realizing their success to bring her to life, remove her bandages and help her to stand. Now for the ending. You know the procedure. Five cents stop. Go to the description box. If you've seen it, continue on. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. The monster comes down the steps after killing Carl on the rooftop and sees his mate. The excited monster reaches out to her and asks, Friend. The bride, screaming, rejects him. The dejective monster observes, She hates me like others. As Elizabeth races to Henry's side, the monster rampages through the laboratory. When Pretorius warns that the monster's actions are about to destroy them all, the monster pauses and tells Henry and Elizabeth, Go, you live. Go to Pretorius and the and the bride. He says, "You stay. We belong dead." While Henry and Elizabeth free, I mean flee, the monster looks at the bride, sheds a tear, and pulls a lever to trigger the laboratory and towers destruction. End of story. So, what did I think of the Bride of Frankenstein? Well, it was the first classic monster flick I saw, and, well, excuse me, just want to see what's going on with my movie, anyway, I gotta say it was pretty good, I decided to watch it after seeing it, um, the clip of it in Brian Chucky, and <laughs> I gotta say the film's not bad, I know we had to wait until last few minutes of it to see the tile character, and, well, after re-watching, I realized I'm, I'm an understanding person. I gotta say, this film is absolutely good, and I liked it just as much as the original. <clears throat> anyway. Since it's rep since its release, the film's reputation has grown, and it's now frequently considered one of the greatest sequels ever made. Many fans and critics consider it to be an improvement on the original, and it has been hailed as Mr. Whale's masterpiece. Well, I do say, yes, it's pretty good. It's just so much incredible and all that stuff. I just think it's good. There's so much to say about it. I enjoyed the story, the atmosphere, the, the music, which was done by Friends Waxman. That was really good. Our um, cast includes Boris Karloff, built simply as just Karloff, as the monster, and Colin Clive back as Henry Frankenstein. They were all real good. Valerie Hobson as Elizabeth. Ernest Desiger as Dr. Pretorius. Very good. <clears throat> Elsa Lanchester as good as Mary Shelley and the monster's bride. Yeah, they're all good. But anyway... That's all I can tell you. Good story, good cast, good characters, everything. It's good, just like the original. 
So with that said, would I recommend The Bride of Frankenstein? The answer is hell yeah. I think this is just another perfect monster flick you need to check out. I think you'll really enjoy it. I know years later, both... Well, both these films would be um, spoofed and what have you. And Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein, which I will be reviewing later on this week. So be on the lookout for that. So anyway, let me know what your thoughts are on Brian Frankenstein in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button below, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And join me next time when I bring to you my 50th anniversary TV log of The Electric Company. Thank you for watching. Now, by 50th anniversary TV log, it's that's why I'm calling this just for fun, because The Electric Company is turning 50. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you like this, check out these other reviews I've done. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of the original Dracula. The upper right-hand corner is the back-to-back -back review for the original and animated versions of Disney's Frank and Weenie from Tim Burton. Or go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my review of, of fi the film that got me to, into watching this. And that's Bride of Chucky from 1998. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video, games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.